All right, everybody, you have your lock channel installed, and now we're going to talk about insect netting. And I want to talk about this now because now's the time if you're going to put insect netting on your roll-up sides to install it. This thing is going to be a permanent fixture on the hoop house itself, so it's going to be the first layer that you put inside of the lock channel because the next thing you're going to do, to do is put on the plastic and you don't want, can't have that interfering. So this is the time to deal with the insect netting. It's not hardware cloth. A lot, I see a lot of people trying to use different meshes and different screens that was uh, more intended for windows and door screens and stuff like that. It's not really the same because a lot of that, although it does have UV inhibitors, it's also meant to be past the soffit or past the eaves of a house. So it's not getting as much direct sunlight. It's also way more flimsy. Even, even the aluminum, uh, the way it's, it's made, it doesn't go in the lock channel ideally. It will go and I've seen it work, but um, it's just one of those things that wasn't designed for what it wasn't designed for. So the insect netting that we have from an agricultural standpoint, it's a much tighter weave because what we're trying to eliminate is the, not only are we keeping things like where I'm at in Texas, the grasshoppers coming in, which is very large, but for a lot of folks, we're trying to keep thrips and white flies, things that, I mean, are super tiny when they're young and they're migrating that can get in. So this tiger weave kind of helps keep them out. So along with the, the, the tiger knit. I did call it tiger knit and I meant tiger knit and you're just going to have to learn to forgive me. Go, uh, go on uh, giggles. <laughs> along with the tiger knit, uh, it also has some, it has UV protection in it. So the screen is designed to last a long time. It, it's not going to gray out. It's, it's not going to get, uh, it's not going to discolor over time because of UV inhibitors that are in it. it. It's also reflective. And what I mean by that is that the sun that hits it, it, it reflects off of it. And what it actually does is it, it creates a light wave that bugs don't like. So they're not going to want to be on it. They're not going to want to be near it. The reflection that it causes, the spectrum of light that it outputs from the sun hitting it uh, just makes bugs want to stay away from it. So. It has multiple benefits. So it's a great physical barrier, but it's also a great you know, non-physical barrier because of that reflective Correct. situation. The other thing I wanted to mention on, on the agricultural insect netting in particular that we have is it's six and a half foot tall by 105 foot long. And the reason it comes in that size and uh, very quickly, probably by the time you listen to this, we'll be very uh, close to being able to cut custom sizes is that the 105, it gives you one solid piece that goes from one end to the greenhouse to the other. So if you did buy something from one of the big box stores, you're going to have all these splices and you're going to need all this extra lock channel and wire on the ribs of the high tunnel. It's a ton of extra work. So while it's slightly more expensive, you have all these extra benefits, plus you're saving on labor and extra material that you're going to have to use to install something that it wasn't designed for. So just kind of keep that in mind. and. Um, yeah, that's it for mm -hmm. insect netting. Uh, I cannot imagine having a hoop house where we are without it just because of the grasshoppers alone. So something to keep in mind. I keep saying the last little thing, I keep thinking of stuff for insect netting. So if you're running beneficial insects, not only is it keeping the bad insects out, but it's helping contain the beneficial insects that you're spending money on. So ladybugs, uh, praying mantis, um, lace wigs, anything like that that's going to be a predatory uh, bug or anything that could get in, you're uh, helping create an environment for that. That's the last thing. And I'm sure I'm forgetting something. So now that you have your insect netting uh, installed, it's time to take a look at the plastic and that'll be in the next segment and we'll see you then.